Hello, my name's Amy Binion. And I'm Andrew Fogarty. We both work as chest doctors in Nottingham. Sadly, we've obtained a lot of experience managing COVID patients in 2020. We realised that many doctors are having to look after COVID patients for the first time and wanted to share our experiences with them. We hope that somebody somewhere finds this helpful. The first thing to consider is how do we diagnose COVID viral infections? All medical admissions are swabbed for COVID virus on arrival. However, it's very important to be aware that the diagnostic tests are not infallible. The rapid point of care test is about 50 to 70% sensitive. This means it may miss about 30 to 50% of cases who really have COVID infection. The PCR nasopharyngeal swab is around 80% sensitive. This means it may miss approximately 20% of cases who really have COVID infection. It's really important to accurately identify patients' COVID status. There are three groups of patients in particular that need consideration. Those who have definite COVID infection, those who definitely don't have COVID infection, and most importantly, the third group who have probable COVID infection but have had a negative COVID test. This is important because it will inform where they go in the hospital and has huge implications for infection control measures and patient safety. In COVID infection, the chest x-ray is often clear. If there's COVID pneumonia, it generally causes wispy, diffuse lung shadows, which are quite characteristic on chest x-rays. Sadly, you get familiar with the appearance of COVID pneumonia on chest x-rays very quickly. So what is the treatment for COVID viral infection? It's often quite simple. If the oxygen levels are normal and the patient is able to, they can go home, rest, drink plenty of fluids and take some paracetamol. However, if the patient needs oxygen, we know that treatment with dexamethasone and oxygen will decrease mortality. It's important to watch out for patients with a positive COVID diagnosis and a second lung disease, such as pneumonia or COPD. These are tricky. Sometimes we will treat both conditions to be on the safe side. If a COVID inpatient deteriorates on the ward, this will often happen at around day five to eight after the onset of symptoms, when the patient has initially been stable. The main indicator is an increasing oxygen requirement to keep oxygen saturation stable. If the patient is for ITU, then ITU should be made aware of the change in clinical status straight away. It's really important to be aware that resuscitation is unfortunately associated with poor survival in adults with COVID infection, we have provided a reference to data from 68 intensive care units across the USA if you want to know more about this. Palliation of symptoms is particularly important if the patient is very breathless or dying. Please use your palliative care protocols as appropriate. COVID can cause many complications and there are a few ones to always keep in the back of your mind. Pulmonary emboli and arterial thrombi are more common with COVID infection and need consideration. We've noticed that D-dimers are often raised in patients with COVID pneumonia and so a CT pulmonary angiogram can be very, very helpful in eliminating pulmonary emboli in particular as a differential. Some patients develop permanent lung damage in the form of a rapid onset pulmonary fibrosis. They may even need to go home with oxygen. Less commonly, patients may develop myocarditis. This is indicated by a high troponin and can be difficult to distinguish from a myocardial infarction. The virus can also damage the kidneys, and this is easy to overlook. So to conclude, the bottom line for managing patients with COVID infection is always protect yourself and the team with PPE. For every patient, ask yourself, should this person be on dexamethasone? For every patient that you see, ask yourself, is this patient stable? Are they improving or are they deteriorating? And finally, I'd like to end with an observation. Families appreciate a regular phone call to update them on their relatives if possible, as it can be difficult to get through to the ward by phone and they can't routinely visit the hospital due to the infection control restrictions. Thank you very much for your time.